proprietary firmware. The very first mobile phones in the 1980s did not have what we would call an operating system. They ran on proprietary firmware, which is basically simple built-in code that lets you make calls, store a handful of numbers, and maybe send a text message. That was the entire feature set. One of the most famous examples was the Motorola Dynatac 8000X, released in 1983. This phone was not pocket-sized. It weighed nearly 2 pounds and cost almost $4,000, which was roughly the price of a used car at the time. Despite its absurd size and price tag, it became a cultural icon. In the 1987 movie Wall Street, Gordon Gecko, played by Michael Douglas, is seen walking on the beach with a Dynatac in hand, using it as a symbol of power and wealth. Other celebrities, from Hollywood stars to Wall Street bankers, carried them proudly as status symbols. Brands like Motorola, Nokia, and Ericsson dominated this early era. Each phone had its own unique software built from scratch specifically for that device only. There were no apps, no downloads, and definitely no app stores. These early proprietary systems were not smart at all, but they paved the way for the real smartphone operating systems that would come later. Symbian. The first true smartphone operating system was Symbian, created in 1998 by Nokia, Ericsson, and Motorola. By the early 2000s, Symbian ruled the mobile world. If you had a phone back then, chances are it was a Nokia running Symbian. From the classic Nokia 3310 with its unbreakable body and the legendary game Snake, to the high-end Nokia communicator series used by business executives, Symbian was everywhere. By 2006, over half of all smartphones in the world ran Symbian. It was so iconic that James Bond himself used a Sony Ericsson T68 I and die another day. But as the smartphone revolution arrived with touchscreens and app-driven interfaces, Symbian began to show its age. It was designed for buttons and keypads, not the smooth, glassy touchscreens that Apple and Android were perfecting. While iPhones and Android devices gave users fluid, app-driven experiences with intuitive navigation, Symbian felt clunky, slow, and outdated. The menus looked ancient, the icons seemed confused about what year it was, and updating the system required plugging into a PC and praying nothing went wrong. While competitors were reinventing how people interacted with phones, Symbian was still asking if you wanted to exit this menu. Symbian had its charm, though. You could set any sound as a ringtone. You could explore system folders like a hacker. It was not perfect, but it felt like your phone really belonged to you. BlackBerry OS In the early 2000s, when the world was still tapping away on Nokia and flip phones, one device stood apart. The BlackBerry, with its iconic physical keyboard, secure email, and BBM messaging, which stands for BlackBerry Messenger. Black BlackBerry OS became the favorite of CEOs, politicians, and governments. In fact, U.S. President Barack Obama famously carried a BlackBerry during his time in office. BlackBerry was the definition of professional. If you had one, you were serious about business. The operating system was fast, secure, and unmatched in messaging. It had encrypted messaging, serious security protocols, and that satisfying click-click sound when you typed. If you saw someone with a BlackBerry, they probably had a meeting scheduled, or at least felt important, pretending they did. But then then came the touchscreen revolution. iPhone and Android changed how people interacted with their phones. Apps, touchscreens, and media consumption became the future. BlackBerry, tied to its keyboard identity, was slow to adapt. It added apps, tried a touchscreen, and even flirted with Android later on. But the spark never came back. Eventually, people wanted Instagram more than enterprise email. By the mid-2000s, BlackBerry OS collapsed. What was once a symbol of power became a relic of the past. Still, BlackBerry OS had its moment. It was cool without trying to be cool. And if you ever typed a full paragraph without looking, you know the magic. Palm OS. While Nokia was conquering the world with Symbian, another pioneer was taking shape in Silicon Valley. Palm OS. Launched in 1996, Palm OS first appeared on personal digital assistants, or PDAs, before evolving into smartphones. These devices were the choice of professionals and tech enthusiasts. With a stylus in hand, you could tap through calendars, contacts, notes, and even install simple third-party apps. Apps. For many, the Palm Pilot was the first taste of a digital pocket assistant. In 2009, Palm tried to reinvent itself with WebOS, a sleek and modern platform. It introduced swipe-based gestures for multitasking, the very same ideas that Apple and Android would later adopt and refine. Critics loved its design, calling it ahead of its time. The interface was smooth, intuitive, and felt like the future. But Palm did not have the financial muscle or ecosystem to compete with Apple's iPhone or Google's Android army. Palm phones 
clones faded into history, but WebOS never truly died. Today, it lives on in a very different form, powering LG Smart TVs, quietly reminding us of a bold experiment that helped shape the way we interact with screens. Windows Phone Microsoft saw the smartphone boom and decided it wanted in. In 2010, they launched Windows Phone, a bold reimagining of mobile. Unlike iOS and Android, Windows Phone introduced the Live Tiles interface, colorful squares that updated in real time with messages, weather, and news. It was clean, modern, and ahead of its time. The smooth animations, the organized layout, and the minimalist design made it feel futuristic, like using a phone from 10 years ahead. For a moment, it seemed like a real challenger, but the app gap killed it. Developers did not flock to Windows Phone, and users found themselves missing popular apps. There was no Instagram filters, no proper YouTube app, and no love from developers. Even though the operating system was smooth, reliable, and stylish, it could not survive without apps. People liked the interface, but could not live without their favorite apps. And once even Microsoft lost interest, things went downhill fast. In 2017, Microsoft officially ended support. Windows Phone, like BlackBerry, became another casualty in the smartphone wars. Still, Windows Phone deserves a moment of silence. It tried to be different, and for a brief, shining moment, it was. iOS. In January 2007, Steve Jobs walked onto the stage at Macworld and held up a device that would redefine technology. The iPhone. It had no physical keyboard, no stylus, no tiny buttons, just a sleek multi-touch screen that you controlled with your fingers. iOS is Apple's mobile operating system, sleek, stable, and completely in control. It only runs on iPhones and iPads, which means Apple gets to design the rules and the playground. Everything looks smooth, feels fast, and even older devices keep getting updates for years. When the App Store launched a year later in 2008, it turned the iPhone into more than a phone. It became a platform, one that could play games, book flights, order food, and connect the world in ways no one had imagined. People love how it syncs across devices. Your messages, photos, and notes just float between your phone, laptop, and watch, like they are all part of one brain. A big advantage of iOS is Apple's ecosystem. If you have a MacBook, iPad, or Apple Watch, everything connects seamlessly. You can start a task on one device and continue on another without any extra effort. But freedom? That is another story. Want to install an app from outside the App Store? Nope. Customize your icons or change the theme. Better read a 10-step guide. Share files without AirDrop? You will need courage. iOS is beautiful, but it is also a little bossy. It is the operating system that takes care of you, but only if you follow the house rules. No SD cards, no headphone jack on newer models, and do not even think about using the same charging cable as your friend. However, iOS is very restrictive. You cannot install apps from outside the App Store. Customizing the system is very limited, and simple tasks like transferring files can be frustrating without Apple's own services. Although iPhones are expensive, and Apple tends to reuse the same design and features for multiple years. Still, iOS is known for being smooth, secure, and easy to use. Apple controls both the software and hardware, which means everything is well-optimized and runs very smoothly. Android. But Apple was not alone. In 2008, Google unveiled Android, an open-source alternative designed for everyone else. Unlike iOS, Android could run on almost any brand's phone, from Samsung and HTC to Motorola, Sony, Huawei, and beyond. This flexibility, paired with Google services, made Android explode in popularity. Samsung's Galaxy series, in particular, pushed Android into the hands of millions, rivaling Apple step for step. Android is the world's most popular mobile operating system, and probably the most chaotic. It is open source, made by Google, and used by dozens of phone brands, from Samsung to tiny no-name models with three charging ports and 27 pre-installed apps. Android lets you do almost anything. Change your launcher, customize icons, install apps from sketchy websites, or even turn your phone into a mini spaceship. It is freedom with consequences. Android is super customizable. You can change the look of your phone, install apps from outside the Play Store, and even install completely different different versions of Android like Lineage OS. Android phones come in all price ranges, from cheap models to high-end flagship phones, because not all Androids are equal. Some are blazing fast, others lag when you open the camera. Updates? That depends on your phone, your brand, your region, and whether Mercury is in retrograde. Many phones come stuffed with bloatware you did not ask for and cannot delete, and some features vary wildly depending on who made your phone and what mood they were in that day. But Android also has some downsides. Not all Android phones get regular software updates, which can lead to security risks and slower performance over time. Many phone brands add a lot of unnecessary apps, which can make the phone slower. While Android is very powerful, it is generally less optimized than iOS, meaning some apps can feel smoother on an iPhone than on an Android device with similar hardware. Still, Android is the operating system of possibilities. If iOS is a private school, Android is a giant DIY festival. Messy, loud, but kind of
kind of amazing. Together, iOS and Android crushed the competition. Symbian, BlackBerry, Palm, and Windows Phone all fell in their shadow. And today, these two operating systems control more than 99% of the global smartphone market. Tizen. Tizen is Samsung's in-house operating system, the one you have probably used without even knowing. It runs on smartwatches, TVs, fridges, and sometimes even ovens. Established in 2012 with the joint participation of Intel and Samsung, Tizen is a Linux-based open-source device software platform run by the Linux Foundation. It was designed to offer a flexible and customizable platform for a variety of devices. Over the years, Samsung has leveraged Tizen to reduce its dependency on Google's Android, particularly in the realm of wearable technology and smart home devices. It is fast, efficient, and does not crash when you are asking your fridge for the weather. But despite all that, it never really made it big on phones. Samsung tried. A few Tizen smartphones were released, and then quietly disappeared. Turns out, people did not want a phone without the Play Store, or with a browser that felt like it came from 2012. So, while Tizen thrived on wristwear and appliances, it never got invited to the smartphone party. One of the most significant milestones for Tizen came with its adoption in Samsung's line of smartwatches. The Galaxy Watch series, powered by Tizen, has been praised for its intuitive user interface and efficient performance. The operating system's lightweight nature allows for longer battery life, a critical factor for wearable devices. Beyond wearables, Tizen has also become the backbone of Samsung's smart TV lineup. As of 2023, Tizen OS powers over 270 million smart TVs worldwide, making it one of the most widely deployed operating systems in the TV industry. The platform supports a wide range of apps and services, including popular streaming platforms like Netflix, Spotify, and Apple TV, in addition to Samsung's own services. Still, it is out there, quietly powering your smart TV menu, counting your steps, or updating your washing machine. Tizen did not win the phone war, but it sort of won everything else. Firefox OS. Then came Mozilla's Firefox OS. It was bold, betting entirely on web apps instead of native apps. The idea was simple. If a web page could do it, so could your phone. Cheap handsets shipped with Firefox OS, especially in developing countries. The interface was clean, and the concept was ahead of its time. But without strong developer and carrier support, it could not compete. It shut down in 2016. Firefox OS was a dream that the web could replace everything. But the reality was not quite ready for that vision yet. KaiOS. Meanwhile, in a completely different corner of the market, KaiOS was making a surprising comeback story. KaiOS is what happens when classic phones get a tiny taste of the internet. Instead of chasing high-end smartphones, KaiOS revived the old-school feature phone. It runs on feature phones, yes, the ones with physical buttons, and somehow brings apps like WhatsApp, Google Maps, and YouTube to a T9 keyboard. Cheap, durable handsets with long battery life, but with a modern twist. Apps like WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook, and Google Maps built right in. It is lightweight, super affordable, and wildly popular in places where smartphones are still a luxury. For millions of people in India and Africa, this was their very first step into the internet era. And it does the job. You will not find fancy animations or a cinematic lock screen. But for millions of people, KaiOS is the first step into the online world. Fast boot, long battery life, and a menu that feels like 2005 with 4G. Today, KaiOS is the second most popular mobile operating system in those regions. Sure, it is not made for multitasking, and yes, Typing a message takes some thumb gymnastics, but it proves you do not need a $1,000 phone to watch a video or send a meme. Sometimes, all you need is a signal and a bit of patience. Harmony OS In 2019, the global smartphone story took a dramatic turn. After US sanctions cut Huawei off from Google's Android services, the company faced a crisis. Most brands would have collapsed, but Huawei answered with its own creation. Harmony OS is Huawei's answer to Android, or at least, that is what it wants you to believe. Reports surrounding an in-house operating system being developed by Huawei date back as far as 2012 in research and development stages. These reports intensified during the trade war between China and the United States. After the United States Department of Commerce added Huawei to its entity list in May 2019, effectively banning the company from using Google services, Huawei had no choice but to accelerate the development of its own platform. On August 9, 2019, three months after the ban, Huawei publicly unveiled Harmony OS at its inaugural developer 
Developers Conference in Dongguan. Officially, it is a brand new operating system. Unofficially, it walks like Android, talks like Android, and runs Android apps. Some say it is Android with a makeover, others say it is something more. Either way, it was born when Huawei got cut off from Google and had to build its own way forward, fast. Harmony OS was not just another smartphone platform. It was designed as a universal operating system connecting not only phones and tablets, but also watches, TVs, laptops, and even smart home devices. The whole idea is one system, many devices, perfect Harmony. On the surface, Harmony OS looks slick. It works across phones, watches, tablets, even fridges. But the deeper you go, the more it starts to feel familiar. Like you have seen this before. Like you are still in Android's house, just wearing someone else's clothes. In China, Harmony OS quickly took off, shipping on millions of Huawei devices and gaining support from local developers. Its adoption signaled more than just a technical shift. It became a symbol of technological independence in the face of global pressure. It looks a lot like Android, but has its own app store and is designed to work across different Huawei devices like tablets, phones, and even smart home gadgets. In China, it is growing fast, but outside of China, many popular apps are still missing, which makes it harder to use. However, with Harmony OS 5, released in 2024, Huawei took a major leap. This version, also known as Harmony OS Next, removed all Android code and replaced the multi-kernel system with its own Hongmen kernel. It became a fully self-developed operating system, no longer relying on any Android foundation. It only supports apps in its native format, meaning Android apps can no longer run on it. This was a bold move towards complete independence. In the end, Harmony OS is less about tech and more about survival. And hey, if it works, who cares what is underneath? Fire OS. Fire OS is Amazon's take on Android, modified, branded, and fully optimized for buying things. It powers Kindle Fire tablets, Fire TV devices, and other Amazon gear. On the surface, it looks like Android. It runs Android apps, mostly. But underneath, it is Amazon all the way down, with Alexa instead of Google Assistant, Amazon App Store instead of Play Store, and recommendations on every screen. The experience? Smooth enough. Affordable tablets, simple interface, great for reading, streaming, and being gently nudged to buy more socks, or books, or 10 other things you did not search for, but are now recommended just for you. Fire OS works best if you live inside the Amazon ecosystem, but if you stray, try installing YouTube or Google Google Maps, you might find locked doors and missing features. It is like Android with one rule, shop responsibly, or do not. We will remind you anyway. If you thought the battle for mobile dominance was intense, wait until you see how the desktop wars unfolded. Check out our next video, every Windows version ever released.